Hello future people, welcome to Getting Tabled. I'm Jason the Bruce, and today we're checking out something that I've A, wanted for a very long time, and B, when it got revealed, I had mixed thoughts about. Today we're finally having a look at the crew, and let's see what my final opinions are of the models. don't have any context for my opening. I have been a massive fan of the Krut from the moment that I first discovered them, pretty much. Uh, of all of the alien races that exist, the Krut are my favourite. Uh, I have been on record a number of times long before the podcast of saying that I want a full Krut army. I don't think I'm really going to get that. Well, that's not why I said it. It's just one of those things where I really would love it that much. So here we have our Fast Stalker Kin Band. It, it is a really nice box, honestly. Um, the reason I waited for them to come in a single pack by themselves as opposed to buying the full box is the full box here in Australia is stupidly expensive. Um, to, to the It's just it's more than I'm willing to pay personally. And I don't have the sort of income to just throw that sort of money at a box that I'm only half interested in. I mean, the terrain is really nice. I wouldn't mind getting the terrain, uh, but I'm not willing to spend 250 bucks just on that terrain because I'm only ever going to use it for one thing. And I wasn't interested in the Navy breaches. I know a lot of people were, but I wasn't. So it's just not something I was interested in. Um, so we get 12 miniatures in this. All of these have alternate builds. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. I don't know if this is one of these boxes where you have to buy two of them or not. Uh, I know it is if you want to have everything, but it's a matter of how you want to build things, obviously. Uh, I know for a fact that this is a mini that I want to build. Um, th th there's a few. But it's going to be interesting to see. From what I understand, a lot of these parts, if you have crude, like regular crude, uh, you can pretty much just exchange them over. So that might be my way around it. I do have some extra crude somewhere. Uh, I would have to go hunting for it. Um, but I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. All right, so the Fast Stalker Kin Band. Um, before assembling your miniatures, please read through the instructions carefully uh, because this is something that does have multiple ways to build things. So obviously there's going to be some suggestions in here, I suspect. So our first one builds either the Crute Kill Breaker, sorry, Kill Broker, or um, Honor. Nope, nope, it's just different options of the same model. This is interesting. Apparently the heads are in two pieces, and there really isn't much point for that. Like, they are not complicated to... that. There really is no reason for these to be in separate pieces. Um, the original crew, these don't have any more detail in the heads than the old ones do, and the old ones are never in two pieces. That's completely pointless. In my opinion, the only reason they've done that is to make the sprue look bigger than it is. Interchangeable parts. So we do get multiple head options. Not all of them are in two parts. It's interesting that some of them are, because that's just really odd. So we have a Crute Warrior and a Crute Longsight. Build-wise, this looks fairly straightforward so far. Um, there's nothing mo, there's nothing massively complicated about it. And I will say this: look, as much as uh, the, the criticism I had for this when they revealed it, and I know I wasn't the only one that said this, 
was like the CUDA is supposed to be fast moving, agile, and all of these models are just standing here. Um, they're also single pose, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. Um, so here we have a regular Crute Warrior. We've got two regular Crute Warriors. I am liking these so far. These ones, you can definitely tell that those ones are from the same sprue. I mean, you can with this one as well. Um, but it's not quite so obvious with that one. Or that one. Because, I mean, as much as all of this is the same, those arms change it quite significantly. Where that's kind of the same. I mean, this is too, but it's a crouching position. There's no way to hide that. Fruit Warrior and the Pistolia. So that's, this will be a Pistolia. The Bow Hunter is what I will be building as well. And this last one is actually, there's three different models you can build out of that. So that's a problem because I'm pretty sure I want both of those. And then we got the crude hounds, which look fairly straightforward, honestly. Um, like very straightforward and that's fine. They do look better than the old crude hounds. That's probably all that matters at this point. So here we are, we're looking at the first sprue. Uh, I, I already, like the detail on these is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I mean, the old Crute are quite old at this stage. They, they do hold up much better than you think they do. Uh, but they're still old at this point. So still something that can be improved upon and has been improved upon. Like even the Crute rifle here. I mean, it looks essentially a, like a carbon copy of the original, but the detail has been refined, like in the skins here in particular. It all comes off really nicely. Other side of the same sprue now. Just trying to get a good look at the details themselves. They all look really good. Like they really, really, really do. Yeah, so far I'm loving this. Moving on to the second sprue now. Uh, I think it's probably fair to say I am expecting some of this to eventually start looking very same-ish um, because a lot of these guys are holding crude, crude rifles. Uh, not all of them. Um, it's probably worth noting that some of these accessory pieces kind of look like they're carbon copies straight from the original. There is definitely heads that are new, though, which is nice. Um, and some of these new guns look absolutely phenomenal. Um, I mean, the Crude Hounds automatically get a pass because, well, quite frankly, the old Crude, crude Hounds are fine cast and therefore these win automatically. But that's not to discount the detail on these models. They look phenomenal. Really, really good. Loving, 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 loving what I'm seeing. The fact that we actually do get some of these sculpted with the tower weapons as well is really nice because that is what you should be seeing. Love what I'm seeing here. This is just so cool. And our last piece, the um, the bird, the, the, the raven. I mean, it's an alien bird, but it's been painted up on the boxes to look black, so I'm calling it a raven. Uh, I quite like that. I mean, it's simple. It, the head is very small, so there's not really a lot they could have done with it. But I do like the bird. 
The bow's nice. It looks very sci-fi. I mean, it, it, it's more of a crossbow than it is an actual bow. Uh, but I, I really like this. It's kind of like a mix between everything, really. I mean, it doesn't look like there's any use for this. It looks like it's there for no reason. Because you can't tell me it projects the gun. But it's fun. And that's what matters, I suppose. But there's so many like random capes and stuff that fit very nicely on the models. that makes them come to life a little more. As much as I kind of wish there was at least one or two that were in like proper actual running poses. Um, the fact that they've been given more character is what I'm liking about this. Like they feel more alive, even though they're just standing there. Uh, at least, from the sprue at least, that, that's the impression I'm getting. Is that the, the models feel like they're more lived in, like that they've fleshed out the world a little bit more. And that's kind of what you want for a box set like this when you're revisiting an old set of models. Is you want them to... Well, you don't want them to completely reinvent them, but you do want them to, to flesh them out a little more and like give them an, a, a reason to exist. Uh, Bases-wise, just because the obvious, most of them are all standard. You get one that comes on a larger base. So there we go. So That's the Fast Talker Kin Band. Uh, I'm going to be building these up now, uh, and I'll be back with you in what will be instantly for you, but it might be a couple of days in time for me. Uh, just because I, I really I do want to give some thought as to how I want to build this this band. So, uh, here we go. I've got my twelve guys here, and I've gone through. So first and foremost, one of the things I said when I was going through the book was that in theory I wanted to build both of the heavy options. Now you can't take both of your heavy options, but that is something that I wanted. In the end, I chose the Skinner. Uh, because from what I understand from videos that I've watched, this is the better of the options. Uh, if you want to take them and actually have a game where you might actually be able to have some fun. So that's the way I went. Also, quite frankly, of the options that you have with this guy, I honestly think this is the cooler looking weapon. It just looks cool. Come on. And the other one, there is an option... And of all of these, there's only one option where there's two operatives on one model. Pretty much there's only one of these that's actually a hard decision. And ultimately, it's this guy. So this miniature in and of itself is absolutely phenomenal. You will notice there's supposed to be something on the ground I haven't put here. Um, that's just because I, I want to do some slightly different basing options with mine. Uh, I mean, it looks fine. It's just I've decided not to put that there yet. I'm going to put it on top of my basing. But the other option is this. And I've actually put it on one of the regular troops. So normally this guy would be in the crouching position as well. So obviously he is now standing. Um, so I guess what we really want to look at here is the shoulder joints. Now, I actually don't think this looks too bad, honestly. There is a couple of gaps here. But in all honesty, I don't think this looks that bad. Like, if I hadn't have pointed it out to you, I mean, this doesn't go together seamlessly. You are going to have to spend some time on this. Uh, this gun that's on the back will not fit smoothly and easily because it's not supposed to go on this model. But the f if you're willing to spend the time and be patient with this, the end result is worth it. I have done nothing really to customize this. I've just spent the time and I've been patient, and I think the end result is worth it. I think this works really nicely. Returning back to this, this is obviously the way the model is intended to be built. I had given thought as to whether I wanted to try and have this pose elsewhere, and, I mean, I guess you could try and pose it on the shoulder. I don't know if it would be worth it, but you could. Uh, but again, absolutely stunning as far as miniature is concerned. Um, going back to the actual leader. Now, it's they're both leaders. I chose to go the carbine in the end. Um, 
from what I understand, it's the better option of them, but I don't really know. I, I think it's just the nicer one at this point. Personally, I think the long shot is the standout in this. It's just such a nice pose. Now, in saying that, this is also kind of like that. This is a mini we've seen a hundred different times in a hundred different armies, but it always looks good, whether it be as a sniper for a scout team or like the the sniper pose always looks good, and this doesn't disappoint either. I also want to bring this guy up. Now, the main reason I'm bringing this guy up, this is the cold blood, but I'm bringing this guy up for the head. When I was going through the instructions, I made a point of pointing out that I didn't understand why there was a couple of heads that had two parts because it's never been done before and I didn't understand what it added. I still don't overly think that it's added much, but basically what it's added is in the back, you're getting an extra layer there as opposed to this, which is very clearly one piece. That's what it's adding. It's adding, adding a layer of depth there. Uh, so it definitely does add something. Um, not really to the front of the model, but to the back, it definitely does add something. And that is something that I don't think many other people have really pointed out. So I thought that was worth it. Um, the only basic Kroot Warrior I've done is this guy. And even then, I've kind of gone in a slightly different direction and given him something that I find a little bit more interesting. Just going through them at this stage. I, mean, I am a huge fan of the Crute. I've already said this a number of times now, but these guys are just beautiful. This is, like, weapons-wise, kind of the only gun where I feel like it doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, it's cool, therefore it's fine, but like, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a rifle with an arrow. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, this is the other standout for me, honestly. The Pistolier, I think, like if you were trying to pick a favourite amongst this, if you were going to pick a favourite amongst it, I mean, this is definitely one of the ones that comes up. Like As far as sculpting is concerned, this is just... It feels like something straight out of the Wild West, and I, I don't think that's a coincidence. I mean, there's a lot of Wild West in this. Uh, it just feels really nice. I, I kind of said this earlier as well. Like, the cloaks in all of these, like, they add a lot of character to this that wasn't there in the old models. I, I really think they really do add something. When it comes to whether you can build a full team out of one box, the answer is definitely yes. If you're a collector, then you will want to buy more than one box so that you can have one of everything. But if you're only buying this for kill team, you're fine. Stick with your one box and enjoy it. Um, and if anything was a reason why these boxes exist, it is the Crude Hound. The old Crude Hounds were fine cast and... I mean, these are very nice. Very nice. Like, there's really no reason not to build these. I mean, you kind of have to build these. Um, but these are gorgeous. Uh, if you were to buy multiple boxes, it means that you're going to end up getting multiple of these. And obviously, then that comes down to swapping around heads to make them look slightly different. I really like these, honestly. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I want to tell you about the competition that we're running through our Patreon. For every month of support you give our Patreon, from now until April, you will receive one entry into the competition that we're running to win a Shaltari fleet for Drop Fleet Commander. That includes a Shaltari Dreadnought, a Shaltari Starter Set, a Shaltari Frigates Box, and a Shaltari Cruisers Box. All of this will be sent to one winner. This winner will be drawn at random on our fourth anniversary, which is recorded at the beginning of April. For us to be allowed to send this to you, you need to fit two categories. You must be living in a country where it's legal for me to post you something from Australia. You also must be living in a country where it is legal to win competitions. If you do not live in a country that meets these criteria, then I do apologise 
There's nothing that I'll be able to do and I will be forced to redraw it. Please consider supporting us. We'd really appreciate it. All of this was purchased with my own money. No so there we are. That's the Crute box. I'm, I've been on record to say that I'm a fan of Crute multiple times. And I know I've said this in this video a couple of times as well. At the end of the day, the sculpts in this box are absolutely phenomenal. Among the best that Games Workshop did last year. Um, in saying that, I still want to see more of the Crute. If they do a Crute army for 40k, I would be all in. Even if they price gouge on it, I would be very unhappy with myself. But I would have to. I wouldn't have a choice because I love them that much. Uh, in saying that, I'd probably grey import it if I, if I could get my way around it. Um, but... I do love Crute that much. Uh, would it bring me to play 40k? I really don't know. I mean, I'm slowly building an Eldar force in the background, at least in theory. Um, but 40k as a game in and of itself is just not a game I enjoy. I think that game is far more popular than it has any right to be. It's just not that good. The game really hasn't ever recovered since 7th. It's tried. A Lord knows it's more popular today than it's ever been, but as far as a game is concerned, there's just so much better on the market that most of that audience just doesn't see. Um, but it's kind of irrelevant to this video. This video is about the kill team. And as far as the kill team is concerned, this is not just phenomenal. It's amongst the best stuff they have released as a company in a long time. Um, it's not the only kill team that I'm going to be looking at, though. I will be looking at these guys in an upcoming video, mostly within the next week. From what I understand, this has not gone down very well from a rules perspective. This is definitely going to be seeing the table. I don't know when, because most of my gaming at this stage has to go towards Entropy City, otherwise it's never going to happen. Uh, but this will be seeing the table at some stage, hopefully soon. I don't know if these will. From what I understand, these are just not very good on the table. Lord knows I own enough games. Uh, I own enough armies and forces that just automatically lose already. I don't know if I need another one, but I really want to paint up some Necrons at some point, so that's why I've got them. Um, and I think they look nice. But that'll be coming up shortly. For now, if you get the opportunity to, play more.